Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. Yes, it's Monday afternoon. Liverpool are top of the league. It's a bank holiday here in the UK as well, so I'm sure plenty is watching along and having a nice, well-earned day off. But we don't do day offs here at the Red Men because we want to bring you the best Liverpool content. And today's news update is very, very, very injury-themed. And for what feels like a rarity in this season, actually most of the news is quite positive. Shout out to Lee, to Mirza, to Terry all and Diane all watching along in the chat today. Hope you're all having a great day, guys. Yeah, um, obviously the title of the story you've seen there about Curtis Jones, we were touching on Trent Alexander-Arnold and Stefan Bajcetic throughout the course of the show as well. Dave says, good afternoon, Steve. A new week, top of the league table feels good. Good. It absolutely does. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, in just about an hour and a half's time, Paul and the gang will be live on the Originals podcast, and they'll go more into depth on on today. Oh, sorry, on yesterday's win, the Arsenal game, what it means going forward, all that kind of stuff. So they've got you covered there. But yes, the mood is certainly brighter today, given what happened at the weekend, both in terms of what happened at Anfield, of course, and over at the Etsy has as well. If uh, yeah, if Carlsberg could do Sunday afternoons in the Premier League, it would have went something pretty similar to that, wouldn't it? Liverpool win and our two title rivals both drop points. Um, Jed says, I'm watching from Brisbane and we need the good news. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully I can bring that to you, pal. Let's start then straight away um, with an update on Curtis Jones. Jürgen Klopp spoke after the win against Brighton um, to the media. This is our guys at uh, This Is Anfield who are reporting the story. If you can if you scroll down there, Jürgen told reporters after the game, Curtis Jones is in full training. He trained with us on Saturday, but then he had a bit of extra because of the match day minus one session. It does not have the intensity Curtis needed. So, I'll explain that. I mean, I apologise if it feels like I'm teaching you how to suck egg and you know what that means, but effectively... Jones trained on Saturday, but because Liverpool had a game on Sunday, the training session as a whole, match day minus one sessions are light sessions, basically. They don't, you know, it isn't full intensity, it isn't high impact, all that kind of stuff. So that's why Curtis wasn't involved on Sunday. He's fully fit. It's just that he didn't have that, you know, Liverpool's training intensity is, is really, really high, as, we, as I'm sure we all know. Given that they were one day off from a match, they didn't want to do that. There's no point running people ragged on a Saturday when you've got a game on a Sunday. So Curtis didn't quite get the training session that he needs. But obviously he trains again. He's got all week now and he's he's in contention for Thursday. Um, uh, yeah, he said he'll be in full training. What does that mean for exactly? Let me have a look. Nobody else will be back on Thursday. The others, slowly but surely, but not yet. So it looks like, provided there's no setbacks between now and Thursday, when Liverpool host Sheffield United at Anfield, Curtis Jones will be back available for selection, um, which is huge news. Um, I think it's easy to overstate uh, or, or forget, really, because Liverpool have been in such a good form. You know, They've been winning games for the most part. Uh, they've been playing really well when they haven't won. Um, Blip aside at Manchester United in the cup, of course. Um, it that case, how good Curtis Jones was before he got injured. It was a big blow when he went off against them, against Brentford. Obviously, in the same game, it was the same game. Of course, Liverpool lost Diogo Jota as well. So that win come at a cost. But Jones has been he's been in great form pretty much all season. Actually, the injury again, it, as often is the case with Curtis, um, it comes at a poor time for him really. Because I'm guessing. You know, and listen, we probably as Liverpool fans don't really care too much about international football. Some of us do, some of us don't. I'm one of those who don't. Um, but I, I'm guessing he, he had his eye on that England squad. There was a couple of friendlies the other week where he, he really would have liked to have been involved in. And he would have, he would have earned that call had he got it because um, he is, is form this season. But unfortunately, again, injury struck at the wrong time. Um, but looking ahead to Sheffield, obviously... Look at the weekend, Liverpool's and midfield options were decent. You know, Enzo, Sabaz, Lyon, McAllister all start. The manager was able to bring on uh, Harvey Elliott. He was able to bring on Ryan Gravenberg as well. So there's five. If you can now add Curtis Jones into the mix, and you, there's that sixth option. You know, as Liverpool, Liverpool are pretty much playing midweek all the time. Now, for now, in the end of the season, obviously, you've got a league game this week. Then you've got the two Atalanta ties as well. There's an Everton game in late April again midweek. There's loads and loads of games. Liverpool have got what? Nine Premier League games left, but there's also a chance, a minimum of two, excuse me, <coughs> hopefully five European games as well. So what, you know, 14 games by, in what, less than two months, um, all told, given that the the Europa League final uh, is, the, what, the last week of May. You know, that, that's, a, that's an intense schedule. Um, 
So you're gonna need all the players available. And and, and I I often think as well that there, there are games with with Curtis, um there are games with Curtis where he, he really helps Liverpool set the tempo of the game. I think I think if he was fully fit, I think Jurgen Klopp would like to have Curtis Jones against the Brighton. Um just he keeps the ball. And you know, Brighton are so good in possession themselves and the, the, the transitions. Um I do believe the Egan would have liked to have Kers, but good news, he could be available whether he starts on Thursday. That feels a push, um, but he could certainly be an option off the bench, um, which is, which is again, Liverpool squad, and, and Liverpool's young players have done really well. They really have. Um, and, you know, James McConnell, I was looking at the bench yesterday, you know, Jaden Danzer on the bench, Bobby Clark's been on the bench a couple of times as well. And they have not let us down. But getting more senior players back at this point, I think, could be really, really beneficial. I'm just going to have a sip of my drink. Cause... <coughs> Pardon me. The voice still hasn't recovered from it. That amazing tip that we had over in Belfast and Dublin. Um, let's have a look into the chat. And I can't wait for Diogo Jota to be back, says Cam. Yeah, Jota's back running. He's still a couple of weeks away. Um, by all accounts, he's still a couple of weeks away. But... Getting there, Alisson again, the, the news on him again, the players getting there. Hopefully, barring any setbacks, they should all be available over the next what, three, two, three, four weeks, whatever it is. Um, Sir Scott, he asked a good question. Do you think Kersa starts on Sunday? Man United away, will he start? I think he will start, yeah. I think he might start in place of Sir Bosley. I think, I think the manager might go Endo McAllister Sir Bosley again on Thursday. And I think he might want Jones at Old Trafford. Um, with Sir Bosley off the bench. I do think he will play him. Um, he was first choice before he got injured. Um, I don't see any reason really why that would have changed. Um, so, but, so yeah, I do. If he's fully fit, then I do think he will start on Sunday. At, um, is, is it Man United? I'm getting, am I getting my fixtures right there? I'm, let me just check my fixtures because I know these fixtures are coming thick and fast that I keep forgetting when, who and when we're playing. It, it is United, isn't it? Um, after we've played Sheffield United. Yeah, Man United away on the 7th. Yeah, I do. I do think he will be. Um, any other... Questions we've got. Um, who we Teddy McDad with Allison? We wouldn't have conceded so early against Brighton. We need him back. I don't think even Allison would have saved that shot, Teddy. I'll be honest. I don't think there's too much Keith Kelly could have done about that one. If I'm honest with you, I, 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 that was one of those. I think that was unsavable. Um, it was just a great strike. So I think you're being a bit harsh on Keith. I actually thought he had a decent game, all told. Um, but I, I, I think to be honest with you. Of course, miss, we, we have missed Allison, but Keller has been really good too. He's been really good for the most part. Um, we have missed him, of course. You'll, you'll always miss the best goalkeeper on the planet. But uh, I, I, yeah, I think I, I don't think I, I don't think even Allison would have saved that one. I think that was unsavable, if truth be told. Um, back to Kersh, then it'll be interesting again. The man, it's a good headache for the manager to have. Who does he think his best midfield is? Uh, there was a time when he was using McAllister as a six, and then he would have Endo. On the bench, he would have Sir Bosley and Curtis Jones together. I think Endo's been so good as a six, and McAllister has been so good in one of the number eight roles that I don't think he can change that. So for me, my I, I think Endo's a definite, and I think McAllister's a definite, and then the other one will rotate through Sir Bosley, through Elliot, through Graven Birch, through Jones. Obviously, where and when, obviously you've got to manage minutes and stuff like that, but I think that's, that's how I'd go. Um, I was mightily impressed with Sir Bosley in the second half yesterday. I think it's fair to say, um, first half, I thought he was a little bit anonymous within the game. But second half, he certainly he certainly comes to the fore. Like he played a big part in the role, as did McAllister. Um, but it's just nice for the manager to have these options rather than having to trot out, you know, tired players or asking players to go again or using youngsters. Like I say, I doubt in his plan would never really he would never really want to Bobby Clark to start a Forest away, for example. Uh, if not for the injury situation. Now, Bobby Clark let, didn't let anyone down. He had a really good game. But it just as we get to this intense period, the more options Jürgen's got, uh, the better. Um, so, really good news on Curtis Jones. Um, I didn't even I didn't even mention Trent Alexander-Arnold when I spoke about midfield options there, by the way. And maybe that was remiss of me because given how good Connor Bradley's been at right back, Trent might certainly be an option in midfield. Um, speaking before the game yesterday, Trent was on Sky Sports. He said he expects to be back in a couple of weeks. He's been out since February the 10th. Um, Alexander-Arnold has been out since Liverpool beat Burnley in February. He missed the last 10 games after tweaking a knee injury that he originally picked up against 
against Arsenal in the FA Cup. However, speaking to Sky Sports uh, about his rehab and his, his return to action, Liverpool's vice captain said it's going well. I'm in the final stages and excited to get back out there. Uh, it's been hard watching. It's been one of the longest injuries of my career. Um, and I think in a couple of weeks I'll be back uh, if, as long as everything keeps going well and there's no setbacks. So a couple of weeks, that, that would rule him out probably of Sheffield United, probably rules him out of Man United, maybe Atalanta, but maybe Trent's got his eye on Crystal Palace on April 14th. Um, now, whether that's as a left-back, right, sorry, as a right-back or a centre midfield, the time will tell. Um, but good news, and Liverpool get the vice-captain back. Trent was in magnificent form. You know, I, I know Conor Bradley's been exceptional recently, but Trent was brilliant as well, you know, especially actually when he moved into midfield a couple of times. It'll be interesting for you guys to let me know in the, uh, in the chat. As and when Trent comes back, do you think he goes out back into right back and takes Conor Bradley's place? Do you think he becomes a midfielder? Because Jürgen does have plenty of options in midfield. I've just gone through them all. Um, how many are set to be back all around? So it'll be interesting to see what, what the manager does with Trent. Um, I know he said himself he'll have a battle to get back in the team given how well Conor Bradley's done um, at right back and Conor's been fantastic. But it'll be interesting to see what the manager does. But yeah. Trent did say, I'm not going to get back into the team. I'm reputation. I'm going to have to keep working hard. Um, it's not what I'm expecting, but it's exciting because I want to get out there and I want to help the lads back in this title race. So it's it's good news that Trent's going back. Listen, the more players, the better. And world-class players like Trent Alexander-Arnold. Um, but yeah, let, uh, let me know, guys, what your thoughts. Nigel says, I will put centre midfield for Trent and I'd keep Connor at right back. Um, I do believe... That's it's 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 a tough one, man. In terms of like, in terms of where you're gonna play, like Luke says, I'd probably put Trent back at right back as well, and it would be a little bit harsh on Conor Bradley, but I think I think I probably would do the same. Um, but the option, of course, the movements in the field as and when needed is is certainly there for us. Um, Chamir said, I'd bend Trent until he learns how to defend, even as a midfielder, he must learn to defend. I. I think it's so overblown. This Trent can't defend stuff. He's bet he's a better attacker than he is defender. Of course, he is. He is not a bad defender. He's a fine defender. Um, I, 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 I think yeah. I think it's overblown. If truth be told, Abridas said I put Trent back in mate all day. He is amazing. Um, we've got you never walk alone. Says what about Bradley in midfield? I don't think that's an option. I think Bradley as a right wing option. Is Liverpool did that, of course, in the um, in the in the League Cup final. Now, obviously, that means spelling Mo Salah's minutes. It depends how um, it depends how uh, fit Mo Salah is in terms of managing his minutes. But maybe that becomes an option as well. They're all good. They're all good questions to have. They're all really good. You know, the manager got headaches. It isn't a headache of picking the same players. You might be injured or might be tired. He's getting um, he's getting new ones. Uh, new options available to him for good reasons. Players available. Mr. MH, stable. Well, new episodes of Istanbul. Find Istanbul will be released, released soon. Um, I need to go and speak to Arden about that. There are a couple films I'm ready to go. I think they're, they're in the final process of being edited, mate. So, yeah, there should be some relatively soon. It's just been mental with all these games, to be honest with you. Trying to find time. But we're not too far away. So, yeah, find the Istanbul Challenge. Episodes 1 and 2 are available now on YouTube. They've been out for a while. Episode 3 was the first time I had to get on an aeroplane. Uh, there's a spoiler there for you, potentially. Um, so, yeah, soon. I'll I'll try and clarify that with, with Adam later, but yeah, we're not we're not I don't think we're too far away from it for now. Um, but going back to the news anyway on the Trent stuff, Teddy makes a good point with Bradley and right wing at right back. We've merely we've barely missed Trent, and I would agree. It's the same thing before with Allison and Kelleher. We haven't missed Allison that much because Kelleher has been good, but still there's levels, um, and I do think that. Um, the, it's horses for courses. There'll be games that suit Trent. There'll be same. There'll be games that suit Conor Bradley. Trent can be a midfield option. All really, really, really good problems for the manager to have. Um, I pay. I personally will go Trent, but I'm not. I, I, I think you can. You can. There's no. There's no need to rush Alexander Arnold back. He can. He can be. You know, phased back in. And I include Joe Gomez in this option as well. Now I know he played left back the other day, but obviously Joe's available at right back as well, and he's been in fantastic form. So there's no need to rush Trent. Get him fully fit and firing. But I still expect him to have a major impact on this title race. Trent, he was in great form. You know, some of the goals he scored, you know, Fulham and Manchester City springs to man straight away. Or, or, like, huge goals in the context of a season. Um, 
So fingers crossed, yeah, Trent's fit and available sooner rather than later. Looks like a couple of weeks away. Maybe again, maybe Crystal Palace at home is the one to um is to look at. Just to clarify again, a few people asking about Jot and a few others. Yeah, again said nobody's there for nobody's available for Thursday. Um I'll just clarify. I'll read the quote out so that I don't misquote the manager. Um he said, Well, Kurt Jones, you'll be in full training. Nobody else will be back on Thursday. The others are getting there slowly but surely, but they're not there yet. So there are different stages. Jot is out running, we know that. Alison a little bit as well. Trent's now back in the final stages of his rehab. So it's going well. Um and another man who we haven't really seen too much of this season again. He's had a, a really poor uh, injury look this season. Again, a lot of it's been put down to his change of his body and stuff. But Jürgen Klopp explained the plan to get Stefan Bacetic back fit and far and for the running too. Um, now, Stefan Bacetic, we've hardly seen him. He was in for a little bit. We saw him in one Euro, a couple of European ties here and there. And then over than that, it's just been a really injury hit season for Bacetic. Obviously, he burst onto the scene last year. He was one of the very few positives to come out what was a pretty poor overall season for Liverpool last year the emergence of Stefan Bacetic was one of the good ones one of the good things because he was fantastic at times um, Jürgen's explained where we're at with Stefan Bacetic the fact that he is ready to train now but Liverpool are going to take it easy um, Klopp exp- he, this, he spoke about this before the Brighton game but obviously you guys might have missed it we haven't done a new show since so on Stefan Bacetic he is in partial training with the under 21s he'll be in full training this week with the under 21s um, and Jürgen said that's because you know Liverpool have got a couple too many games so they've had a game Sunday recovery on uh, Monday they'll train twice Tuesday Wednesday Tuesday, they'll train fully once Tuesday they'll do a minus one session Wednesday and they play again Thursday so that isn't enough for Stefan Bacetic to get those full minutes so he's going to spend this full week training with the under-21s. And then after that, so this time next week, so what is it? It's Monday, April Fool's Day, today the first. So Monday the 8th, the expectation and the hope, provided again no setbacks, is that Pachetic will be back for training with Liverpool's first team in, in a week's time. He's going to do a full week with the 21s just to get those full minutes under his legs in, in, in intense training sessions. Liverpool, obviously, like I say, can't have too many of those with the games. Um so oh, there's another name to throw into the mix as well. We talked about midfielders before. They might get Stefan by Chetich back already this season uh, for, the, for the running. How much of a party he'll play, I don't know. Again, Jürgen does have plenty of options available. And given how good Endo's been as well, um, it would be hard for Stefan to even get himself back in the team. But last year, he made 19 appearances in all comps. This year, he's only been able to make two. He started against Alaska in the Europa League. Um, you remember that game he played? Um, he ends up playing like as a right-back in that game. Uh, and then he came off the bench in the League Cup game against Leicester in September. That's all we've seen of Stefan Bajcetic this season. It, it's been a it's been a miss. Um, but yeah, if all goes well, he'll do a full week with the twenty ones this week, and then next week he'll be back in full training, available for selection, hopefully for Liverpool. And there's another another um, another option to throw into the mix. You never walk alone. Says we need Canate back. Um, can I say his buys available? He was on the bench yesterday. They're just managing minutes. I spoke about this on the on the final word, Joe. There's obviously something with Canate where they, you know, they they are managing. Obviously, they're managing his minutes. He's he's had injury issues in the past. He, you know, he played in midweek for France. So there's obviously something there that Liverpool are managing. He's obviously not a hundred percent all the time because if he was, he would be a little bit like Virgil Van Dijk and he would just be playing. Um, but. Yeah, I, I imagine we'll see Ebu on Thursday. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they want to save him for Old Trafford. I, I'll be fine with it. Like Floriot says here, Quant has been massive. Yeah, listen, if Quant, I think, I think if Quant um, plays Thursday with with the idea of Canate for Sunday, I think that would work. Obviously, I know Cl- he's dealing with this muscle issue, Canate, isn't it? It's not like an injury, but it's just something they have to manage. I wouldn't be adverse to giving him a week off. You know, now I would have wanted him to, I would have wanted him available yesterday. Liverpool got through that game. They didn't need him. And now I wouldn't be risking him. I think I would be I'd be happy with with Quanton and Van Dijk on Thursday with a look at maybe getting Canate back in at Old Trafford. Uh, I think that would probably be where I would be at if, if I could choose. But listen, I think um I think Quanton has been so good that it, it it hasn't been a massive issue, but at some point, you've got again, Ibu's the better in the pecking order. He's, he's, he's still better than Kwanzaa at this point in time. Um, I would I would be looking for me if I was here, going to get Kanate back in. Um, 
for United, I think I, I wouldn't risk him on Thursday because he does have this issue. MK says, do you have a Robbo update? The latest on Robbo is that he's expected to train. He's, he's in contention for Thursday. Um, no guarantees yet. Apparently, they're not, it was just a knock. It was a bit of swelling that they had to deal with. So there's a chance that it's not a long-term one. They described it as days rather than weeks. Now, he injured it on Wednesday, um, playing for Scotland. I think it was Wednesday. So... There's a chance he's back in training sooner rather than later, so I don't think it's a long absence for Andy Robertson. Again, he might be another one who they don't really risk on Thursday. They might be happy to go again. Given it, you know, Sunday to Thursday gap is, is big, um, then it turns into Thursday to Sunday, which is slightly shorter. So I wouldn't be shocked if Jürgen has the same 11 to go again to start against um, against Sheffield United. Obviously, use your subs throughout the game, and then you might make one or two of other changes. For, for the games or traffic so he might want Robertson at left back he might want Canate as centre back for example but the um, the positive is that the lads who have all stepped in so far have all been fantastic Gomez great Canate great all that kind of stuff as well um, <coughs> Diane says it's a classic coincidence that the Everton game is now the la- same night as your live show in London yeah um, so anyone who's got tickets to our London live show um, it does now clash with the Everton game, so we're, we're in we're in talks with the venue and see what we can sort out there. Um, might be able to show the game if they can't. We'll do something, but yeah, we'll keep keep an eye on that one because we, we're we're in, we're in talks. Obviously, no one wants to miss the the derby, um, even if it is one of our fantastic live shows. But so yeah, Diane, we're, we're, we're trying to sort something. We, as soon as we know anything, and it'll be this week at the latest, we'll let you know what's going on with that one because you're right. Obviously. The way it's worked out, the derby has been not being rearranged to when, to when we are meant to be live in London, which isn't ideal, if truth be told. Um, we'll sort something off, don't get me wrong. We'll, we'll, we'll box something off. Um, we'll see how that one pans out. The GOAT since 97. We need a strong team on Thursday to get as many goals as possible for goal difference. I always get nervous. I always get nervous when it comes to chasing goal difference because the last time I seen Liverpool really try and chase goal difference, it bit them in the arse at Crystal Palace um, all those years ago. But as it stands, Liverpool are six goals back from Arsenal. Obviously, they're two points ahead of Arsenal. Um, now, they are playing Sheffield United, and you would expect Liverpool to beat Sheffield United. It's worth mentioning, like the the, the game at their place this year, it wasn't that it wasn't that comfortable. They are listen, they're not in great form, Sheffield United. They are currently sat bottom of the Premier League, so Liverpool should expect to beat them. But also. Um, I think I don't I don't want them to take die off the ball. Win the game and then go for but you are right. If, if you know if you're two or three up, sometimes when you you might take your foot off the gas a little bit, which is an option. Obviously Liverpool play Man United on Sunday, but maybe you could throw fire, throw a few few subs on and say actually rather than manage the game, you know, we'll we'll take a few years off, but you guys go on and try and rack the score up. That that's fine. Um but the, the important thing is win. If listen, if Liverpool win every game, all nine of their remaining fixtures. It doesn't matter if Arsenal win every game 15-0. It doesn't matter. They can't catch us. So, first and foremost is win the game and then see how it goes. If it, if it comes down to goal difference near the end of it, then maybe that, that is something that you need to look at. And, it, and also, Arsenal do have a plus six. And if you think about why they've got plus six, it isn't just this, of course. But obviously, they recently played Sheffield United and, funnily enough, beat them 6-0. Uh, and that, that explains the difference in the goal difference at the moment. Uh, and that was away from home. So, I'm sure Liverpool might have half an eye on it. But I also think, to be honest with you, I think Jürgen needs to... He'll be prioritising, obviously, winning the game, first and foremost. Get the three points, win the game. He will have an eye on Sunday um, and manage a minute. So rather than saying to Nunes, Salah, Diaz, burn yourselves out for 90 minutes, go, 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 goal, 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 I think he will have to be smarter than that um, because he does have a big game at Old Trafford coming up on the Sunday. But the, like I say, all these players that we spoke about before coming back from injury allows him to make changes within his squad. So it is definitely something to consider. Um We'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We we just win, and if we can beat them by a comfortable margin, even better. But they just need to win. Win the game first and foremost, and, and whatever. If they win all their games, they're the champions. It's just, it, I know it's easier said than done because there's nine Premier League matches and some very very good teams that Liverpool still have to play. Um, they also have to go to Old Trafford. Um, my United aren't good. They, in fact, they're crap. But listen, Liverpool, they be, they haven't beat them this season. You know, they played them twice and haven't been able to get the better of them. So that's another one. You know, Liverpool still have to play Villa, Liverpool still have to play Spurs. There's a long way to go. There's a derby, of course, as well, like we mentioned before. But if Liverpool can just win their games and don't even make goal difference a thing, that would be um that would be the, the ice on a cake to what's been a, an unbelievable season and of course an unbelievable managerial career. 
for Jürgen Klopp. I had a chat there before. I'll have to scroll back up. It was from Esham. Are you guys still doing the pod today? Seeing as it's Easter Monday. Yes. Um, Paul and the guys will be live at 2pm with the Red Men Originals podcast. So, go and get yourselves a bevy. Go and have a bevy. Yeah, you know what? It's Easter Monday. Go and get a bevy. It's fine. You can have a drink. It's on me. Go and have a drink. Go and have a chill. Go and have an hour off. Come back to the channel in an hour's time. You'll see Paul, Chris, Chloe and Dan with the latest episode of the Red Men Originals podcast, the flagship show here at the Red Men TV. So, yeah, guys, thank you so, so, so much for joining me for this news update. I'm glad to be able to bring you some good news. We're all having good vibes all is well so far. Thanks very much for watching and yeah, stick around. And now it's time for that Redmen Originals podcast. See you then. Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Redmen content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today.